that's the, the great thing about uh, therapy. We have treatment and it's effective. So treatment can either be counselling or counselling combined with medication. Dr. O'Sullivan, you've mentioned that anxiety disorders are very common in your, in your psychiatric practice. Um, you've also told me that there are many effective treatments, which is really encouraging. So can you tell us about the treatments that are available? I can. And that's the, the great thing about uh, therapy. We have treatment and it's effective. So treatment can either be counselling or counselling combined with medication. Now, when we look at counselling, we can view it from three different perspectives. First of all, counselling that focuses on the brain, cognitive therapy, identifying the negative thoughts that are linked to anxiety and replacing them with healthier, more flexible uh, thought patterns, thinking patterns. Then we look at problem-solving skills, analysing the problem, solving the problem. Social skills social skills therapy where a person becomes more confident and more functional in social situations. Then putting that to one side, we look at strategies for dealing with reducing the anxiety level. Anxiety, of course, is such an important factor in anxiety disorders. So we teach the person relaxation therapy, meditation, mindfulness practice. And these strategies are very effective in lowering the anxiety level and, more important, giving a person a sense that they have control over their anxiety, that this is something they can manage. And finally then, we have general factors like diet, exercise and a lifestyle that promotes, promotes uh, mental health and well-being in general. Now, all of these therapies can be done on a one-to-one, -one, on an individual basis, or on an outpatient basis in a hospital, or as hospital day programs. So there's a variety of options that are available to the person who is interested in treatment. Hmm. Can you um, touch on as well exposure to uh, triggers? Um, yeah, yes. That in the case of someone who has a phobia of some sort. Yeah, and we talk about say a phobia, we talk about exposure therapy. And the basic principle here, the basic principle here is introducing, introducing the person with a phobia, say a phobia of dogs, which is one we see, introducing them to the phobic thing, the phobic object, if we could call a dog an object, mm -hmm. uh, by degrees in small bits that they can tolerate and over time they learn to desensitize or condition themselves to the feared, the feared object, in this case the dog. That combined with relaxation therapy and meditation and exposing uh, the individual to maybe photos of the dog, videos of the dog and then by degrees uh, the live animal itself. And that's a, a basic principle of uh, exposure therapy that we use in, uh, in anxiety management. And that can be applied to uh, agoraphobia, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and so on. Mm. And what about the medication aspect of treatment? Uh, when do you know if pills are required? Equally important, when to use medication. And of course, this is something you should discuss with your doctor or your psychiatrist. So for me, uh, what determines medication, the use of medication, is uh, the severity of the anxiety. If the anxiety disorder is severe and overwhelming, then medication may be recommended. Alternatively, if a person's in counselling and they're not getting better, then it's reasonable to look at medication as an option. Sometimes we will use medication in times of a crisis, especially, especially the benzodiazepine, the tranquilizing medications. A person's going through a crisis, they're overwhelmed, and during that time they may go on medication which they can withdraw from as they get more involved in counselling. Mm. 
with the medications, what medications are used? Well, the, um, I suppose the best known medications are the antidepressants, the SSRI antidepressants. There are other medications that are used, but the SSRI, the uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, like um, sertraline or uh, Ciprolex, uh, Celexa, Citalopram, um, have been commonly used for quite a few years now and successfully used in the treatment of anxiety. Um, then we have the benzodiazepines. These are the tranquilizing agents like uh, Ativan or lorazepam or clonazepam, uh, Rivitril. Generally speaking, we use the benzos, the benzodiazepines like uh, Ativan or lorazepam as short term. So starting treatment, uh, they quickly kick in and help to bring the anxiety under control. And then as treatment progresses, especially counselling, the person can withdraw from the uh, tranquilizing agent. Also, there are times when a person has an acute attack of anxiety and they will temporarily use the uh, tranquilizing agent. The problem with the tran tranquilizing agents uh, is the, um, the, the risk of addiction or the, the risk of dependence. And so we have got to keep that in mind when we embark on that type of treatment. The, Antidepressants, the SSRIs, uh, can be used in long-term treatment because that is not quite the same issue. And for some people with serious anxiety, they may need to go on long-term treatment. But always when I prescribe medication, I always prescribe it in combination with counselling because they, they both you know, work together and uh, can be very effective as, as a combination. Generally, how long will treatment take? Difficult question because anxiety you know, varies a lot from person to person and each person is different in their own way and their life situation is different. But as a general rule, if I have a person attending me uh, for treatment of anxiety and if they're not significantly improved after 10 or 12 weeks, then I think we have to sit down, take another look back to the drawing board, as it were, and just examine what's happening here. Have we missed something? Is there a hidden problem? Maybe there's a coexisting illness like depression or alcoholism. Have we the right diagnosis? All of these things have to be asked, examined, and then go ahead based on the information that we have acquired from this reanalysis, reassessment, of the situation. How do I, how would a person know uh, what is the right treatment for them? Yes, and that's a question that I often hear discussed. How do I know I'm on the right treatment? I think the first thing, I think the first thing, if I'm the patient, I need to get to know my problem. Become self-informed. Read up about your condition. Read up about anxiety so that you're an informed patient. So then the question I would ask myself, the diagnosis the uh, mental health expert has given me, does that make sense to me? Can I agree with that? Does it describe the problem I have? Then I would ask, is the treatment working? Do I find that it works for me? Do I understand why it's working? How am I doing? Is it successful? These are the type of questions that I would put to myself. And if the answer is yes, then I know that I'm on the, I'm on the right track. Thank you. Thank you.